armed gunman stalks Iranian American dissident journalist. On July 25th, a man in Brooklyn was arrested after being found armed with a loaded AK-47 type assault rifle outside the home of Iranian journalist and women rights activist Masih Alinejad. Alinejad, an Iranian-American women's rights advocate living in New York, had long be has long been the target of the Islamic Republic of Iran. According to a criminal complaint filed in the Manhattan Federal District Court on July 29th, a man named Khalid uh, Madiev behaved suspiciously outside Alinejad's house for two days in the last week of July. Madiev was waiting outside the journalist's home in a car, and he roamed outside her house and even tried to open the front door. He was later pulled over for breaking a traffic rule and arrested for having a suspended license. The police officer found that he had a suitcase in the backseat of the car, which contained an AK-47 assault rifle with 66 rounds of ammunition. She believes that the man is connected to the Islamic Republic of Iran, and in a televised interview, she told the regime to go to hell. This is not the first time Elena Jad was under threat. In 2021, four Iranian intelligence agents were charged with conspiring ki to kidnap the journalist and forcibly sent her back to Iran, where she would likely be executed. So it's amazing how pathetically poor this attempt was. The, on so I, many I, different I, levels. It's <laughs> on so many different levels. It's like, were you guys even trying? <laughs> Do you hire Maybe a the, clown to do this assassination? <laughs> the fuck? Yes. So the guy shows up to with a gun, with an AK-47 and some cash in his car, just parks in front of her house and orders food delivered to his car while he's there, right? And then he just you know, walks if you're over. Doing a steakout, you get hungry. You get hungry on a steak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but he just walks over to the front door and tries to just open the door, just like randomly. Here, let me show the video. Look at this. He just wait. You have you have audio, yeah? Oh, there's audio yeah. as well. He just walks there. He just yeah, like and around they... the porch. Does he not see that there's a security camera? He must. It, this is a ring camera. They're very obvious. Yeah, and he just puts his face like his face is on camera, and I don't know what he's doing. He tries to open the front door. Yeah. So he gets arrested and they're like, he waves off his Miranda rights, which is obviously the first mistake <laughs> right there. And no, actually, the first mistake was driving with a suspended license, breaking traffic right. rules, uh, wandering around your target's house on camera. Like they couldn't hire somebody that actually has a license. Okay. Traveling with an extreme amount of cash. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And then he gets, okay, so he gets arrested. Like the FBI, FBI shows up, right? And he's like, why are you trying to open the door? And he's like, rent is too high. <laughs> right? He's like, rent is high. I was just here wondering if they have a room to spare. <laughs> And like so waving up his at this right house side. that's like over a million dollars. Like they must be renting yeah. this place. Out. Ten million dollars, I think. I, that's what I heard. Actually, I don't know. Um, but um so and then I was like, is this your gun in your car? I was like, and he's like, No, I'm like, what what gun? And like like there's, a, acts like there's a gun in my car. <laughs> Get there. This sounds like a comedy. Yeah, and he's and then they're like, and he's like, oh no, I I spoke too much, and he's like, okay, can we get that Miranda I think back? <laughs> like, I need a lawyer. And and by the way, he, before that, he's like, okay, actually, that is my gun. So he's already incriminated himself by saying giving one, you know, one thing about the gun, and then changing his mind and saying like, yeah, that is my gun. Okay, so there's some inconsistencies. That is, <laughs> and then like, and like, actually, maybe I shouldn't be talking. I need a lawyer. Like, you think? <laughs> like, like, okay, so I, I, Susie, like, I'm, I'm not prone to conspiracy, but like, I don't understand. Like, it seems like were they trying not to assassinate her? Because if this is the Iranian regime, I know they could afford better people. Like yeah, they have, yeah, yeah. they have, they have, I mean, I know they're struggling with, for cash, 
but not enough not to be able to hire somebody more, you know, ta- better at this job. Like, I don't know, like, what is it? What they, do you think is it? Okay, it just literally sounds like they found a random dude off the street. No yeah. lie. It sounds like they found a random dude off the street. <laughs> it's a dude from Yonkers. He's from Yonkers. And they're like, you like the regime, right? Come on, just like we got this AK-47. We obliterated we obliterated the serial number. We got you a bunch of cash. Just go over there, see what happens. Like what? Yeah, okay, so somebody in the left chair saying this doesn't seem to be done by the Iranian regime. The okay, government I, this is what it was. Huh? I I read that the US government confirmed that it was. Okay, okay, okay. Because I was thinking like if it's not okay. Because if it's not the Iranian regime, who the hell would want to do this to Masih al There's literally mm-hmm. no one else. Like, so, but if it's the Iranian regime, then it, it must be, okay, so the only way that this makes sense is not, like, it's the regime, but it's not the regime. Like, maybe it's, like, some people with not that much access to cash within the regime. Like, it's a part of the regime. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, I just answered my, you know, my own question. So it's not maybe like it's not like like the the main part of the regime, but they're like some people. The, the regime, regime with a capital T, capital R. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the lowercase T, lowest K R. Okay. So like one because there's not that much consistent, like there's a lot of internal fighting going in over there. So maybe like this is was not signed off by everyone. So yeah, maybe. And they yeah, maybe their budget that that part of the regime's budget was not very high. Okay, no, here's go. the I, thing. This plot was so bad okay they're at okay this is actually like clever though because it's so bad that it makes you question if it was the regime like it makes you second guess because it's so bad you're like it's so bad that they wouldn't they're smarter than this right like it makes you second guess yourself but like like you said there's no other real logical explanation for what's behind this um or or they weren't trying to assassinate her they wanted to send somebody who would get arrested just so that send a message send a message just so that i think that's you know very plausible as well i think that's very yeah. plausible as well but one thing that i didn't think about until i was reading about the news that we covered in the last segment the forced confession of sapide rashnu was the timing of this armin now it's starting to make a little bit more sense because obviously they tried to kidnap masia linajad you know, with or like last year. And then they, but then like, why now? We'll think about the timing of this. In July, we had this massive anti-hijab mobilization across Iran. Masih Linajad is obviously one of the most prominent people pushing for this. And she's been pushing for this for years, right? And we see this massive mobilization, unlike we have seen in a long time. And so I think, and, and who do women in Iran send all their videos to? They send it to Masih Alinejad. They see this massive mobilization. I think they were like, this is too much. Like, she, she's actually starting to get some real traction within our country. Like, we need to send a message. We need to do something. And so I think, this is my own speculation, that part of the reason why we saw this now was in possibly direct reaction to the hijab be hijab campaigns that we saw earlier last month but this is the best promotion of her every time also, she's like losing some you know a little bit of attention the iranian regime is like hey let's give her a boost by making her like by showing everybody that this is the person that we are afraid of the most <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah like how could they not i see? think they legitimately are i think they legitimately are afraid of her the most yes. straight yes, up this is this this lady this tiny little lady <laughs> the skinny little uh, curly little <laughs> curly haired woman that you're seeing on the screen here is the biggest fear of the islamic republic of iran okay this is she is their nightmare this is what this is the face they that piss they piss themselves at night, <laughs> at night. <laughs> when they sleep at night yes 
No, I'm not even kidding. I think that's true. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I think so too. Um, no, and the thing is, you're kind of right, Arm, because not only does that give her obviously massive boost within like anti-regime people, but it also exposes Americans to her activism every single time. Like most Americans don't know about her or her activism, but when this happened, especially last year with the FBI unveiling the kidnapping attempt, like she was all across American media, and now she's in English-speaking news because you know, she has her own new show in Farsi. And so Americans are going to be seeing across the country this struggle, her activism, what she does. And yeah. they will also see how Iran is operating within America. Yes. And, yeah. and by the way, all of with all of that said, the deal seems to actually still be going through. <laughs> like, actually, we just okay, got recent I news. I wanted to talk about this. It makes me so mad that we are still negotiating with Iran. It's ludicrous. How the ever living F are we negotiating with this well, regime who is actively trying to kidnap and assassinate our own citizens within on, on our fucking soil? Like, it's ludicrous. You've said this before. Like in other cases, this would be the declaration of war. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, okay. So to be fair, you do but negotiate. It's about the nukes. It's about the nukes. <sighs> and oil and gas, which everybody de deeply needs right now because of Putin. God, okay. Also, Susie, even if there was a declaration with of war, you would still negotiate with the people who you're at war with. So technically. That would be part of it no i know but it's so insulting to the intelligence and also what masi keeps saying which i think really rings true is she says like basically why are we negotiating when this is the very nature of the regime itself like we don't they do not change if we're on our best behavior this is the inherent essential nature of who we are dealing with this is it might be worse if you don't negotiate. Back. they are not going to change i mean technically i don't know if that's black and white it is possible that if you completely cut them off they would be worse sure that's anything's possible it's also possible if you completely cut them off they'll be they'll start acting apologetic and get their act together okay but the regime has been like this from the beginning. They've been using these tactics, to like diplomatic hostages, like all this stuff from the beginning. Yeah, it's not. But the amount of it could be different. The amount of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. Okay, we could have this discussion another time. I don't want to change I'm this news later. <laughs> Susie is ready to throw something at me. <laughs> um, now is not the time to quibble about this, Navabi. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you want to read some comments? Oh my God, we have so many good comments today. Um, <laughs> he exposes them and saying, "How can someone be dangerous and clownishly funny at the same time?" <laughs> Good. When we were showing the video of um, this guy approaching the house, the shake me is saying, "Not, not sus at all, not suspicious at all." <laughs> and then when we were talking about how he was like, "Hey, so you have this loaded AK-47 in your car? What, what's that about?" <laughs> shake me saying, "What, what is gun?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. These are good comments. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> just not not even whose gun just what what is gun <laughs> <laughs> um asian american is saying when you hire someone from craigslist um and oxymoron is saying he probably trained himself watching bad spy movies <laughs> yeah that's good that's a good guess. Even That's in bad guess. spy movies, you don't order takeout to your freaking stakeout car. <laughs> well, Dry actually, yeah, you would think that the regime would at least get someone who doesn't have a suspended license. Like that is the yeah. bare minimum. That really stood out to me. Like the suspended license, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, by the way, music guy, and uh, on our, we're getting some messages from on from Twitch to to YouTube. So on Twitch, somebody is like flirting with our music guy and YouTube. So shake. Hey, music guy is very hot. Not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> Cross platform <laughs> flirting. Cross platform. Yeah. Guys, just send us your flirting from Twitch to YouTube or YouTube to Twitch or Facebook. We'll we'll be happy to exchange them for you. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting some positive feedback as well, Susie. <laughs> John is saying, Susanna is mad fine. How do white girl become Shia? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I became just so emboldened by hearing the story of Hussein. It brought me to tears and changed my life. Yeah, actually, yeah, we, should do a stream, we should do a stream about Hussein because I have been like... There are some analysis on, on his martyrdom that requires some reassessment, which is very interesting. I could take you, I'll tell you after the stream. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yahoo say. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.